People of the realm, there are many a sea in the world of ice and fire. Amongst the waves and squalls sail swashbuckling pirates, merchant traders and dastardly slavers. In this series, we will be discussing the vessels that prowl the seas and if they've been involved in anything of interest. The Iron Victory is the flagship of the Ironborn fleet. In service to the Sea Stone Chair, the Iron Fleet is rivalled only by the fleets of the Redwines and the Crownlands. Captained by Victarian Greyjoy, the great longship is adorned with a kraken shaped ram at its bow. The glorious memory of the Lannister fleet burning in the harbour at Lannisport was a highlight in this ship's service during the Greyjoy Rebellion. But as the war went on, the Lord's Captain of the Iron Fleet, Victarion, would know but one defeat at the Battle of Fair Isle. Although the victory would survive, the majority of the Iron Fleet would perish at the hands of a young Stannis Baratheon. With the fleet defeated, it paved the way for the successful landing of ground forces on the Iron Islands, and it led to the eventual end of the war. The dream of returning to the old ways was gone, and the memory of Fair Isle haunts Victarion to this day. It took almost five years for Balon Greyjoy to rebuild the fleet, and now the Ironborn are a menace to the sea once again. First, the Iron Victory successfully raided the shores of the north and took Moat Caelan. Much later, and under a different king, the attention of the fleet shifted to the Shield Isles of the Reach, where once again the Iron Victory would show her worth. She was able to pull alongside a Seri ship and make her ready for boarding. Victarion would injure his hand in this attempt, but not before defeating the son of Lord Talbot Seri, forcing him overboard to his supposed death and claiming the ship for his own. Now the Crow's Eye is focused on the east and marine, where a Dragon Queen may finally get the ship she needs, but at what price? The Iron Victory leads the way with Victarion at its helm, commanded by his king, Euron Greyjoy, to collect his would-be wife, Daenerys Targaryen. But Victarion has other ideas and intends to use the Iron Victory, the Iron Fleet, as a wedding gift of his own. And so the Victory and the Fleet sets off for Slaver's Bay, and along the way they will capture a great cog off the coast of Dawn, named Noble Lady. As well as others, this would take Victarion's fleet up to 99 vessels, and all appeared well as the fleet left the Stepstones together. But on the journey, the Iron Fleet is split by fierce storms, which forced the Iron Victory to wait for stragglers, although it was undamaged. By the time they set off, they numbered a mere 54, but they did leave one ship behind named the Shark, in case any others would show up. Now the Iron Victory, Lord Captain Victarion and the remnants of the Iron Fleet continued their journey. They hunted at the Isle of Cedars, and despite going ashore a dozen times or so, Victarion had yet to see an actual cedar tree. Later the ship Grief would deliver to the Victory a wizard named Makoro, who just so happened to be a Red Priest. They decide to descend to the Captain's cabin and strike a bargain, in which Makoro will attempt to heal Victarion. The Iron Captain was not seen again that day, but as the hours passed the crew of his Iron Victory reported hearing the sound of wild laughter coming from the Captain's cabin, laughter deep and dark and mad. And when Longwater Pike and Wolf One-Eye tried the cabin door, they found it barred. Later, singing was heard. A strange high wailing song in a tongue that the Maester said was High Valerian. That was when the monkeys left the ship, screeching as they leapt into the water. Come sunset, as the sea turned black as ink and the swollen sun tinted the sky a deep and bloody red, Victarion came back on deck. He was naked from the waist up, his left arm blood to the elbow, as his crew gathered, whispering and trading glances. He raised a charred and blackened hand, wisps of dark smoke rose from his fingers as he pointed at the maester. That one cut his throat and throw him in the sea, and the winds will favour us all the way to Marine. And the winds did favour them. In fact, they would chase down and capture a trading galley called the Gascari Dawn, a fine prize for the fleet. 
which Victorian renamed Red God's Wrath, in honour of Makoro, whose visions and knowledge of the seas made him almost indispensable to the Iron Fleet. The Iron Victory and the fleets would capture more and more ships along the way, and they were given grim names like Shriek, Ghosts, Shades and Slaver's Scream. Each bolstered Victorian's numbers, and now we leave him and the Iron Victory on the edge of Slaver's Bay, ready and waiting for battle. So remember when you take to the oceans, if you say a dark sail and a kraken shaped ram, I suggest you pray to whatever gods you believe in, because Victorian is coming. What do you think will happen to the Iron Victory? Is she one of the greatest ships the world has ever seen? I am the Northlander, and remember, you know nothing, and neither do I.